Ah, okay. So we're gonna do cheap ramen, really cheap ramen, and then we're gonna make actually good ramen. So here's an old ramen cake that I kind of took a bite out of because I was bored. <laughs> so let's uh, let's make this stuff. And as you know, when you buy it out of the package, like it comes in a little package, it has a flavor packet in it. Um, Around here, they're about, I don't know, you can get them for 30 cents each, I want to say, which is... I'll close that. I don't know what my husband's doing in the bathroom, but it's really loud. Um, well, you can get them for like 30 cents each, but that's kind of ridiculous. If you, and it's, it's the cheap ones, the, like, the really cheap ones, they come with flavor packet, which is basically just a bundle of salt and beef stock. So, rather than do that, you could just go into the Asian section, or the international section, and they probably even have these right next to where all the ramen is, and you get one of these. Um, just get it, buy it in bulk, because, so 30 cents for one cake of noodles, or a dollar for six of them. And you could probably, I don't know, you could probably go on Amazon and order a huge case of this stuff for a ridiculously cheap price. But... So you get your noodles and you go around the store, have an exploration day, go look around the, the international aisle or the noodle aisle or wherever they sell the ramen, you'll probably find that stuff. And then the other thing you need is the flavoring. Well, what are you gonna do? How do you make that? So I forgot to go get it, so I'm gonna have to go get it. But you just go get a big thing of powdered stock. You can do vegetable stock, you can do chicken stock, you can do beef stock. So I'm gonna grab that. Just kidding, I got a whole bunch more stuff than that. Okay, I got some carrots, I got some dried onions. So, um, what else? Here's the chicken stock. Okay, so look at that massive amount of chicken. That's so much ramen. Think of all the flavor packets worth of ramen that is. Um, here's one that's beef. So if you want more of a beef flavoring, try to get the powdered stuff. I've used the liquid stuff before, but it kinda, I don't know what the deal is, but it, ends up molding around the cap. So you really want powdered whatever. This really big container comes, I think was in the, oh, they keep moving the store around, so I don't really know, but this was in the Asian aisle. Uh, you can just find it wherever they have soup mixes usually, kind of out of the way on the top shelf. Don't get the bouillon cubes. You can get the bouillon cubes if you want that certain flavor, but they're way more expensive than just, you know, the uncubed powder. So the other thing you want to do is just grab a massive bag of frozen mixed vegetables. If you want your ramen to not be completely utterly boring like the cheap stuff with just the noodle packet and the powder. So I grab this big thing of frozen vegetables. And now we're gonna do the experiment. So when you buy the cheap stuff you can micro microwave it so that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna get a bowl and for this we want two cups of water. So one noodle packet to two cups of water. <laughs> it 
since we move out of the apartment, the distance from here to the kitchen is a lot longer than what it used to be. Alright, so here's my two cups of water. Oh, I accidentally got too small of a bowl. That's okay. And here's our bulk noodle thing. I'm going to pour the rest of that in there. And, oh, I forgot to get a measuring spoon. Some chicken stock. Or maybe, do you want to do beef stock today? Let's keep making, oh, it's got to be consistent though. Because I want to know how it tastes microwave versus actually cooked. Hmm. <laughs> do we add to MSG? <laughs> That's what we're about to do. Uh, it'd be nice if I could keep an eye on the chat. It's sort of <laughs> quick set this all up so that we can actually stream. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, we're in the world. Okay, let's that make sure that you can see properly. Oh, there we go. I have two monitors. Why don't I make use of that? Okay, so you can see kind of what's going on over here. Everything. I should take you through the kitchen, but I'm kind of hardwired with the webcam. Uh, because the kitchen was just covered in wires at the moment. It was all set up. Dang. Now I had to move everything over here, but it's working. Okay, so we're just gonna add some vegetables so it's not totally boring. Doesn't need to be a lot. Oh shoot, that's so much vegetables. That's okay. I like vegetables. I'll add a bunch of them. All right, so for our microwave ramen, we're gonna try it with that. You wanna do beef or chicken? You know, I haven't had beef in a long time. We're gonna do beef today. Beef. And the nice thing about this, completely vegetarian, because if you don't want beef stock, just get vegetable stock. Um, we need a tea, two teaspoons of this, because we've got two cups of water. <laughs> so time to add that MSG! Actually, it doesn't have MSG in it. What does it have in it? It has... Where is it? Mmm. Mmm, corn syrup. That's my favorite. Beef extract. Yum. But I don't see... No, I missed you. Sad. <laughs> and I shouldn't have to say this, but obviously when you make it by yourself, this is actually a lot better for you than just the store-bought stuff. Because you can control how much salt you put in it. See, our beef stock is sort of... Typically you boil all of this stuff, which is why I'm curious if we could just microwave it. Okay, there's one. There's one teaspoon. And there's another teaspoon. I need a way to stir this. Mmm, that smells good. <laughs> it smells like beef stock. I guess I'll just stir this with my knife. Just stir it up a little bit. <laughs> uh, and I don't know if that- that beef stock will probably be salty enough. Oh yeah, that's way salty enough, definitely. There's a lot of salt in here. I probably should have only put one teaspoon, but whatever, I survive. So we don't need any salt. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of massive amounts of parsley flakes. So, you know, it's your ramen. You can do whatever you want with it. Yeah, it's a parsley flakes and what else do we want to put in there? Maybe some ginger, ginger, not too much. Just little bit okay and how about so that's pretty that's you know you have that stuff lying around wherever mix it up wow it looks so good <laughs> it looks i put too much beef stock in oh man it's gonna be really salty <laughs> but you can add whatever you want you know if it's not salty enough grab a little bit of salt put it in there got the pepper i'm gonna put maybe we'll put some pepper in there Put some cayenne pepper in there, have chili flakes if you want it spicy. I'm actually gonna go get the chili flakes. Chili flakes. I also got our radishes and our corn. 
This is all stuff from our garden, by the way. We dry it. We dry it ourselves. So let's add a little bit of chili flakes, because I like spicy. But just a little bit. It's only... This is such a tiny amount of ramen. Oh, be careful. Okay. Good. And, you know, pepper. It's totally up to you. You can add different kinds of seasonings, depending on what you like. So I'm just keeping this really basic for now. <laughs> so, look, you actually get vegetables with your ramen. And it's... I, I, we need to do the math on this. So, you know, six cakes for a dollar, and then it's like three dollars for this. But I don't know how many, how many, you could make so much ramen with this. It's like maybe two cents per ramen thing for your stock, depending on what size you're able to get. So let's put this in the microwave for three minutes, because that's what ramen packs usually say to do. And we'll, uh, I'll check the chat. We'll keep going from there. gonna do a taste testing too we'll see if it's gross or not because normally with these noodles you want to boil them separate otherwise they're kind of starchy ish mmm <laughs> can't wait to eat the microwave ramen I guess so that's going Let's get started on the real ramen. So, the best way to get flavor into the real ramen is to actually do saute some onion and garlic first. I find that gives it the most flavor, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. If you don't want to do that, you honestly could just boil the water with the noodles in it, strain the noodles out, and then just have your stock, your water with your beef stock or your chicken stock in it and then some seasonings and I'll show you the secret sort of flavor combo of other things to put in but I find the best thing to do is to get onion all over your hands first so I'm gonna chop up this onion here just make a mess all over the plushies and toys but even in the frame yeah there they are <laughs> Mmm, bet you're gonna start and we'll start crying soon. It's gonna be great. Okay, so we'll just slice this up here. And I'm gonna make twice as much as because there's two people here. So. Oh, actually, I have that microwave ramen. You don't need a whole onion, that's way too much. Probably even a quarter of an onion would be good. Oh, although I may as well chop this whole thing up and I'll just put it in a container for later. So that's what we'll do. If you're chopping up an onion and doing garlic and stuff, you've reached the point where you're actually just making cooking. So <laughs> that's why we did the cheap stuff first, where you just grab a noodle packet, throw some stock in it, throw some veg frozen vegetables in it, and you microwave it first because that's the same it's the exact same thing as just buying it out of a packet from the store the only difference is instead of tearing open a spice packet you just take your spices out of the container um it's, it actually doesn't really add any time grab a noodle grab a thing of noodles grab some spices throw them in and you're done yep my eyes are starting to water we're making good progress here we got a nice chopped up onion La, 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 la. Oh my eyes! Ah! <laughs> I'm gonna get a container for that. That sounds like the ramen is done. Okay, 
here's this. And just sort of push everything out of the way. So, um, yeah, as I was thinking, these, the, the actual real noodles are not as cheap and quick as the kind that come in the packet. So it looks like we need to put it in for a little bit longer than three minutes to actually get it to go. If you have an electric kettle, you can just boil some water and pour it on top, and I bet that'll work just fine. Uh, but it seems like three minutes just is a little bit not quite long enough compared to a cup noodle, for example. So let's put it in for, I guess, another minute because the noodles are softening up. And I'll be back with that onion container. Six minutes. Okay, yeah. I bet you're right. I bet six minutes will work. I've got it in for another minute. I'll take a look at it. Maybe put two more if it's still not soft enough. When you buy it in the packet, I guess it doesn't take as long, but honestly... Oops. Great. I'm just making a mess. <sighs> this is the problem with cooking in your office. <laughs> cooking in your office. Yay! Oh, are they? Yeah. Their packaged noodles are pre-cooked and dried again, that's why. Alright, so that's... that is about enough. I mean, oh my eyes. Ah, oh, everything's horrible. We also need to do the garlic. If I can stop crying. Let's put the onions in the pan here. Now that they're all over my desk. Or coffee table. I heard the microwave go. I'm gonna run back there and check. Oh gosh, it burns so bad. Because I'm standing right over it. There we go. Got to do the garlic. So we got the onions in the pan for two people, mind you. Do this a couple times and you'll figure out how much you need for yourself. I'm going to do some garlic. I've got a garlic press, but you know, who can be bothered with that? Just do it this way. Got the knife ready anyway. This cutting board is not flat. <laughs> That's why it's making that noise. We cook pretty much every day, so all of our tools are well worn. <laughs> the cutting boards, especially. In cookie shows they have everything already pre-cut and pre-cooked and blah blah so they can just keep going all right and let's toss this in and again typically you're not gonna be cooking in your office so you'd already have some oil heated up in this pan and you can use I suggest either peanut oil or sesame oil but, you know, any oil will do, if you're just a normal person at home who doesn't have all the weird ingredients that I have because I cook all the time. So, I'm gonna do, looks like I've got sesame oil here. So I'm gonna do this. Now, sesame oil is really good for making stuff that have Asian flavor, but it is very strong, so you don't want a lot of it. <sighs> just add like a teaspoon there. Just enough so that it'll fry up. I'm gonna start frying this up here.
So that is sauteing. I think we're done with the cutting board. Get all this stuff out of the way. Are we done with the cutting board? I mean, you can add mushrooms and stuff like that. I was going to, but since now everything is sort of a mess, let's not do that. This is another thing that will make your Asian food taste really good. So, uh, if you don't have the ability to keep fresh ginger around because it kind of gets soft or whatever, you can find in the spices aisle, ginger, fresh ginger makes a huge difference. I know we've got the dry ginger, right? We've got that. But if for cooking fresh ginger, it tastes so good. You gotta, you gotta have fresh ginger. So in the spices aisle, you'll find these containers that once you open them, you have to put them in the refrigerator. But that's fresh ginger, and it's all caught up and ready to go, and it doesn't go bad as quickly as an actual ginger root. Which, they don't really go bad that fast, you can lay them around for a while. So, I'm gonna toss this to saute in with the onions and the garlic. Um, I'm gonna put a lot in, I think. I'd say half teaspoon, maybe for yourself or a teaspoon. But I really like ginger, so. Anyway, I'm gonna toss some of that in. It just smells amazing now because it's got fresh ginger in it. Okay, so here's our microwave ramen. This is five minutes. So if you like a more firm noodle, and it's been sitting for a little bit as we've been working on the rest of the real ramen. So that looks like it turned out all right. It's pretty hot, so I'm not gonna taste it just yet. And this is just some parsley, the noodles, and frozen vegetables and beef stock. So let's set this over to the side. Man, the ginger smells so good. And now we're going to work on soup base for the onions, the garlic, and the ginger that are cooking right now. For that, let's, uh, let's do that while those saute. I think I've got it down low enough. So here we've got four cups of water. This is enough for two people. Also on the stove, I have water boiling to put the noodles in. So we're going to need about four teaspoons of beef. I'm going to maybe not use so much this time. 
It's pretty salty. You can see on the side how salty it is. It's <laughs> about the same saltiness as an actual ramen flavor packet. So you might want to cut down a bit on it and use something else to spice up your 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 flavoring for your soup. Um, normally I add these in a certain order. This water would be boiling and I'd have all the spices mixed up and ready to go. So we got, according to the package, we added enough beef stock for four cups of water because that's what's in there. And I'm going to add, instead of just more, you know, salt, a little bit of soy sauce. Just a little bit. You can add it to taste. Um, we already used our oil. There's another interesting thing you can do, which is add vinegar. So if you want to try out a sort of Asian flavor vinegar, just a little bit. I'm not going that route today because I'm doing the ginger and soy sauce. But you add all the stuff and then you add a little bit of, this is rice vinegar. Really good for Asian cooking. If you don't have rice vinegar, white, plain old white regular vinegar will do just as well. Add a little bit of that. See if you like the taste of it. <sighs> Maybe I will. We'll see. Um, I always taste test it and then think, hmm, this needs a little bit more of this or that. I'm going to add a little bit of red chili pepper flakes for spiciness. Just a little bit. It's good. And vegetables. So this time, instead of the frozen vegetables, which I have, I'm going to add dried vegetables. So I got some dried corn here. Do that. But, you know, the multi, the bag of multi type frozen vegetables works really well. That's what I usually use, but since we moved out to the country and we got our farm started, um, I'm using our dried vegetables that we made. You probably could buy this too in bulk. Different dried soup vegetable mixes you could use, or just plain old dried vegetables. This is a couple of dried radishes. They have a very strong flavor, so you really don't want that many of them. Dried onion. You don't really need the dried onion, actually, because we've already sauteed some onion up. Yes. And dried carrots. These are really, really good. <laughs> Add a bunch of those. I think that's good for our vegetable part. Um, I'm gonna top off the seasoning mix with a little bit of parsley. If you don't have the fresh ginger, you can just use dried stuff. You put it in now, I already got that. I'm gonna add some onion powder and some garlic salt. See, I'm just kind of sprinkling it in there. Probably didn't need that because of the special saute mix. Now, another trick to make your ramen taste really good is after it's done cooking, add just a little bit of lemon juice. Or a lot if you like lemon juice. So I'm going to get this boiling. And the other thing we got to do is get our noodles going. So I've got boiling water ready for the noodles. I'm going to boil up the noodles separately. Because um, these ones are a little bit starchy. And I don't really want that in my soup base. Let's get started on that. Here's our sautéed onions. Oh, it smells really good. They got a little bit brown because I've been dancing around trying and I haven't been able to pay attention to them. It's alright. Oh, that smells really, really good. See, this is what gives it a lot of really nice flavor. If you have the time to do it. Other, if I don't, I'll just throw in the soup mix and the vegetables and the noodles and be done. And that does not take long at all. Alright, so add this to the soup now as it's boiling. Oh yeah, the other thing you can do, which I didn't do today, is you can boil some eggs. Then you, once the eggs are boiled, you peel one, cut it in half, and add it to your soup. And you've got more authentic, quote-unquote, ramen. <laughs> I mean, at this point, yeah, it kind of is. 
authentic, I suppose. I mean, we're using sesame oil and rice vinegar and soy sauce, so yeah. Yeah, the only difference is when at, with actual, I mean not the only difference, but with actual ramen when you make the broth yourself, it's kind of a crazy process where you use the bones um, and the meat and the fat on the chicken, for example, to cook up your different stuff. And if you're doing like a soy sauce marinated egg, that takes all night. So I've never actually gone through all that stuff. I've done some pretty complicated cooking recipes that take, you know, four to eight hours, but I've not done that. That's a multi-day process. I think the most complicated thing I've done is soup dumplings. Why lemon juice and why add it at the very end? Um, gives it a little bit of a sort of a tart kind of it gives it a bit of a kick to it. I really like lemon juice and citrusy type flavors. And you want to add it at the end when you're about to eat it, like you would do it right now, because if you, it cooks off, the flavor cooks off a little bit. So that's the key, cuz if you just add it in right now while everything's boiling, you're not really going to get the same flavor. So here's our microwave ramen. I'm a little bit curious about if it tastes the same <laughs> as actually it definitely doesn't taste the same as everything we just did, but I'm curious if the microwave ramen tastes the same as just boiling it in water and then straining out the juices, because it might be kind of starchy. I don't know. Still seems kind of hot. Let's try it. See what it tastes like. <laughs> oh gosh. I have to taste the broth. Oh, actually, that's fine. That's fine. It's definitely not as salty as the stuff you buy from the store. So if you want more salt, I would recommend like a garlic salt. You know what this really needs though? It needs that lemon juice. Or maybe a little soy sauce. Okay, let's mess with it now. So we got our microwave ramen. Let's add just a cap of, of lemon juice. I'm about, I'm hungry now, it's lunchtime. The next panels have started by now for sure, so. If you've got your fill of ramen, be sure to check out in the description for all those things. And I'll be going through and checking the server and all that shortly. Yeah. Okay. Mmm. That brightens up the flavor a lot. Now it's really good. Let's add a little bit of soy sauce. Same idea with the vinegar. It just gives the flavor some, uh some variety to it, some body to it, other than just, you know, salt and beef. Maybe we'll add some vinegar, too. There's a soup I really like called hot and sour soup. That uses a vinegar, uh, vinegar base. I haven't made that in a while. Is it hot and sour? I can't remember the name of it right now. I've made it so many times that I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> Yeah, it's hot. It's hot and sour soup. And make that with shiitake mushrooms. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, shiitake mushrooms and eggs. And you pour, you whip up the eggs and then you pour them in while the soup is boiling and they harden up on the top. It's a really interesting soup. I like it all. Okay, so we added, did we add some soy sauce just now? I got distracted. <laughs> Let's try it again. Yeah, this is good. This is really good. Um, you'll find it's more mild than the store-bought stuff, which is, means this is probably better for you. Uh, so cheaper, cheaper than buying it in a packet. Takes about the same amount of time. The only difference is you have to, you know, manage the fact that you have noodles in a separate packet from your seasoning. And you microwave it for four to five minutes. Five minutes, I'd say, if you want really soft noodles. 
You have to do it a bit longer than the store-bought stuff because these noodles aren't necessarily pre-cooked. Maybe they will be. And the other thing is you can do this with all kinds of noodles. So if you get bored of the ramen noodles, man, you, there's just a world of stuff out there. Like, you go get some of that. Uh, yeah, we don't have that many noodles around now, or they're all in different places. So, uh, here's some dragon noodles. Here's some, uh, these are called, these are, the, are these the soba one? Buckwheat. These are soba buckwheat noodles. All of these noodle types, they work the exact same way as that. There's also, we have the thick, fat kind of udon noodles that are really good. Um, it's, as long as it's not, like... Don't just grab spaghetti noodles. That'd probably taste like spaghetti soup. That'd be weird. You want stuff that's, um, I mean, I guess you could use egg noodles. That'd just be strange. Just go for whatever random Asian noodles and try them. See if you like them. Um, oh yeah, orzo. This, we've done, this, I haven't, it'd be weird to do with an Asian recipe, I think, but I've done like a lemon chicken orzo with this. It's really good. So, I'm, I'm excited about these ones. These look like a lot of fun. and we're gonna taste test it. I'm gonna keep eating this. <laughs> Look at all the ingredients on the table, it's kinda crazy. <laughs> you don't think about it when you're just grabbing it out of the cabinet and throwing it in. Yum. Man, this is so good. <laughs> this is nothing like the store-bought ramen. <laughs> Oh gosh, I'm excited for the rest of the con. Thanks for putting up with all of the horrible stuff in the morning. That's the worst it's ever been. Typically, I've tested it out. But um, last night I was setting up the Twitter to automatically post when stuff comes out, so I didn't get around to it. And I thought, ah, oh, it'd be fine. And then I had all these issues, of course. I don't know though, I've streamed off- You know what though, I haven't streamed off that laptop before. It's- uh, I've streamed off my laptop, but not that one. That one had, I don't know what the deal was. Whatever. So I just know not to do that. We won't do that anymore. For next time. There's the next time. I think that ramen should be about done in the stove. I added a couple of dried squash pieces. We have all this dried squash because we didn't know what to do. We had so much squash. There's this yellow summer squash. That stuff grows like crazy. So I'm gonna go fetch those. Do I add some vinegar to this? No, that's definitely good as it is. The lemon juice, lemon juice and vinegar do the same type of thing. They give it a little bit, a little bit of a kick, like a nice bright, either lemony or vinegary uh, variety to the flavor. Yay! I'm excited to try the other stuff. We're gonna have to compare them. And if you wanted to, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could go get the spice. Just buy a typical ramen packet, take it out, and not use their spices and make your own blend. But, um, see, it's not cost-effective to do it that way. You should just get a bulk thing of noodles. Whatever Asian noodles, bleh, Asian noodles are lying around <laughs> does really well. 
and yeah, some frozen vegetables. So that's three things you need to get. Just remember, you need the noodles, you need the stock, and you need the frozen vegetables. Yeah, it's really not bad microwaved. I thought maybe it would be too starchy, but it's not. It's fine. So here's our noodles that cooked up for the next type of ramen. Let's set this aside for a second. Somehow. I need to make room. Let's push all this out of the way. It's kind of great because I'm streaming. There could be total disaster befalling the convention, and I wouldn't even know. That's why we've got moderators and things. Is that That's still kind of hot. Oh well. If it burns the table, I'm gonna be mad. What do I have? Mm. I don't really have anything I can put it on. Well, anyway, here's the noodles. I'm gonna add them to the soup now. So it doesn't have the pretty color, the peas, like the green stuff. Could use some green onion or something. I didn't put any green onion in because we already have the uh, regular onion in this one. You can see the squash pieces. Those are squash. Squash piece. That's an unusual thing to put in ramen, but we have them, so I do it. It's fine. It doesn't make a difference. Um, so you see that this beef stock is a little bit darker because I didn't put as much in the soup base for this one. So I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice, one cap full to each thing. One, and two. Stir that in. I'm gonna have to test the flavor on these. Might have to make some adjustments. Probably a little soy sauce, I think. Mmm, lemon juice. Use some green, I think, just for presentation purposes. Some green onion. You have it, just top it on there. I gotta test the flavor now. Normally I do it before I pour the soup over the noodles. Oh, another thing. Um, if you decide to work with noodles that aren't ramen noodles, you might want to, after you drain them, run them under cold water, because that'll keep them from sticking together. If you end up finding your noodles are sticking together after you strain them, 
Run cold water over. Works like a charm. Hmm, yeah, that's good. It needs salty. Okay, so we're gonna add soy sauce for salty. Try to get it up to par here. Good, but soy sauce for salt. Remember, I didn't add any salt to this. All the salt is in the beef stock. And I didn't put very much in compared to uh, what the container says to do. Stir that in. It's starting to darken up a little bit. Soy sauce for saltiness. Lemon juice for brightness. It's weird that they always describe lemon juice as being a bright flavor, but it makes a lot of sense. Starting to get there. Mm. What do I want? I want garlic salt and more soy sauce. I want more soy sauce. This stuff is really salty and bad for you, but I don't care. <laughs> if you're getting this at a restaurant, yeah, they dump this stuff in there. Uh, especially something like fried rice. If you've ever made fried rice at home, you realize just how much soy sauce they need to put in there to get it to be so, so flavorful. Mm, that should definitely be enough soy sauce now. Two capfuls is quite a bit. It's like a, I'd say half a teaspoon that I put in there just now per cap. Okay. You can see the difference in the noodles a little bit consistency wise, how these ones, since they're boiled, are softer. And then it's like the little, there's a noodle seam you can see in the ones that were microwaved. You don't see that here. Mm. I don't know why the microwave one turned out so good. Because I put too much beef stock in, that's why. <laughs> okay. I think I got it this time. Yeah, there we go. That's good. Mmm. It's so good. <laughs> why is it so good? I really like the lemon juice. I kind of want to put... Let's do it. We didn't put vinegar in the other ones. Just a little bit, just not too much. I don't really want too much flavor. Done. <laughs> now it smells like vinegar. Oh, there's a lot of ramen to eat now. <laughs> Could use a third person. There's three bowls of ramen here. Oh well. It'll be good. Good, we'll be set. Set for life ramen. Alright, so that's it. That's that's how to make ramen cheaper than ramen. But the second option was more complicated. It takes a lot longer because we're doing it on stream and I'm running back and forth to the kitchen and stuff. I'd say microwave ramen that took us four minutes of cooking and probably one to two minutes of just throwing the ingredients together slowly. <laughs> so really no different than opening a package of noodles and dumping a thing of spices in. This one takes a bit longer. I'd say 15 to 20 minutes. Probably 30 for the first time, because you're like, I don't know what to put in. Does that taste right? I don't know. So, you get used to it, you can do it really quickly. It's a really fast thing that you can make. So, thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of the convention. I'll see you, I'm sure I'll see you around. Um, if not, have a, an enjoyable Saturday slash Sunday, depending on where you are. See you later! <laughs>